Welcome back to Pathologic Classic HD. It's about 4.40 in the morning on day 8. We have no quests, no letters, nothing specific to do. So what I'm going to do is head down to Little Vlad's place to get the updated infection map for the day. Then I'm going to head over to the cathedral and talk with the Inquisitor, because I have a feeling that she is probably the one that's going to give me my main quest for the day. After all, the previous letter that I got from her, the evening letter from the Inquisitor Day 7, said that we'll discuss the matter tomorrow. The matter being the fact that she wants to actually cure the plague, despite the fact that it seems impossible. So yeah, get the map from there, and then go talk with the Inquisitor. I'm trying to scrounge up some food along the way because I am pretty hungry. Tourniquet? Nah, not worth it. Let's also make sure to search the bins. After all, we don't. As far as I know, I'm not super time limited today. Although it always ends up being that way. But for now, spend a little bit of time looking through bins and stuff. Stupid tourniquets. Tourniquets are terrible. Blissful quiet, out of that loud rain. And little Vlad is still perpetually stuck against the pillar. Poor what? guy. Ooh, seems like he has a quest for me or something. Right, you undoubtedly have a lot of questions in mind, but they'll have to wait. Except for one, the most pressing, and dare I say, painful concern. We've lost enough time as it is. The crud's not going to wait, is it? And your visit to the termitary. All in all, there's no point in putting it off. What do you mean my visit to the termitary? You mean when I shot the hunchback outside of it? It's not as if I went inside the termitary. I tried. Even though I, it said I was allowed inside, the doors were locked. The crud? I'll have you know that a certain informer of mine... A trustworthy source, despite being a worm, has told me that there's a flow of fake panacea coming out of the termitary. I'll be honest with you, this is encroaching upon my interests. So I'm turning to you for help. This concerns you as well, after all. Yeah, fake medicine, that does definitely concern me. What are your interests, though? It's all very simple. Panacea will always be in short supply. That much is obvious. My dear friend Barak, the highest authority on this, claims that he'll be able to produce 15 batches at best. I'm interested in seeing them find their way into the right hands. What is that supposed to mean? As soon as the bound found out about the find out about the panacea, or worse yet, get their hands on a flask of that ersatz drug, you've seen them. Their romantics just waiting for an opportunity to pull off a heroic sacrifice. Obtaining fake panacea would cause them to lose all prudence. They'll take risks, rush headlong into infection hotspots thinking they have salvation in their pocket, and then the salvation won't work. Huh, true. Very true. I can't have the bound going off killing themselves, I need them, apparently. Apparently, it's incredibly important that they live. Uh, 
I never expected you to care so much about other people. Yes, you are of course correct. The consequences could be abysmal. I'm being a little bit disingenuous when I say this. I don't actually think that he cares about other people. Yes, like I said, the matter is urgent. Not only must we weed out those criminals, we must also put a stop to the rumors, as well as the crud flow. And it would be better for you to accomplish all of that personally. Barack might be better suited for the job, but it's not about skill or connections. I just feel like we should avoid unnecessary gossip. I don't understand. What are you implying? Truth is, the slime balls are backing themselves up with, yes, your own good name. They claim that the recipe is yours and even provide some, uh, proof of authorship. I don't know what exactly that is, but really, your name is actually proof enough for the general crowd. They're rather naive. And the heart incident has already become common knowledge. In certain circles, at least. What does that have to do with anything? The heart was required to extract a microbial culture sample. Well, in any case, they're procuring live hearts, of which there's no shortage in the termitary now, and preparing potions right in front of their buyers. You can imagine the resulting product. Oh god. So there's people going tearing, going around tearing the hearts out of people to turn into fake potions. Jesus Christ. I've heard you loud and clear. So you're saying they've set up shop in the termitary, right? My informer said that it's one of the rooms in the Long Block. He hasn't seen it himself. Long Block. I'm going to write that down just in case they don't tell me that. Long Block. I'll find the lowlifes, and then I'll return to you. And we're going to have a long and unpleasant conversation. Alright, let's get the map what? for the day. Have you heard? The military arrives tomorrow. Hmm. Hmm. Have you heard? So that is a side quest, right? Yep, the Panacea Black Market side quest. Yet again, they substitute a useless fake for the precious solution that many would describe as the epitome of life itself. There is a group of worms in the termitary who brew some atrocious swill that they peddle for outrageous prices, all under the cover of Isidore Barak's name. Just wait till I get to them. Wait, I thought they were doing it under the cover of my name, not Isidore's name. Huh, well, whatever. Either way. The long block. Oh, right, and also the infected zones. Huh. The Earth is infected. Literally, the entirety of Earth is infected. Well, I guess except for, like, Grace's Lodge, but... Almost everything on Earth is infected, and everywhere else is fine. That's weird. That it seems to be... Isolated to one section of town. Alright, so the long block. Well, there's the long facility, but he's talking about the termitary, so that obviously is not it. I guess I can actually go inside of the termitary now. I wonder what it looks like on the inside. I'm really curious. Okay, well... Let's pop over to the Inquisitor's place of the cathedral. See what you wanted to speak with me about. See what I did there? I successfully dodged the plague rat. Hid behind the fence. Ah, more tourniquets. Oh god. 
No! Protect me, man. Protect me. I demand you take that tourniquet and you tie it into like a lasso and try to catch the rat. Tame it. Go pop in and talk with Ion or whatever her name is. Seaweed, seaweed servant, whatever you want to call her. Nothing to say. You know, I am gonna take this opportunity to pack away some of my drugs. Yeah, so the blood is still in there. I don't need this much twilight extract. Should I just keep one on me? I'll keep two on me. Gantma tablets. Immunity booster. Ah, that's what those tablets were that I got from the fire bomber guy in the last episode. How's my immunity, by the way? Could use a boost. I guess I'll take the tablets. There we go. Almost maxed out my immunity. just make that sound when I saved. It's completely random. Did I receive a letter? No. Huh. I haven't slept for three nights in a row. I don't think I'll manage another one. The first part of the game is over, Bachelor Dankowski. Its meaning has been as follows. The powers that be gave you a task with a catch. To learn the truth. They set a definitive condition. This truth has to be nice. Your honor and the fate of your laboratory were at stake. Would you care to learn something? Go ahead. Fanatica has already been destroyed. That's what- Oh, I thought that might be what was happening. I'm not even going to read the rest of the sentence yet. Just say- j Just- to remind you of what I was thinking before. I was thinking that the reason they perhaps sent me to do this impossible task and sent some other people that are- perhaps undesirable, like the person responsible for the military reform being sent here too, is to make us spin our wheels here, maybe even to kill us here, but at the least spin our wheels here while they do what they want to do, back home. I was thinking maybe they've already destroyed or, or, or are in the process of destroying Fanatica. And it looks like I may have been right. There's nothing left. The place itself is in ruins. Your research is in ashes. Your papers have been burnt. Wretched Tellman made sure of it personally. And now I'm going to tell you about the law. Why not? Go ahead. In accordance with the law, the very logic of our world inevitably dictates the destruction of anything unnatural, anything that tries to break its own non-capitalized laws. The disease is nothing more than a tool. It is an instrument of inevitability. It is an instrument of inevitability. So you're saying... The disease is inevitable because... The unnatural things here must be destroyed? What unnatural things, like the impossible tower, the polyhedron, the chalice, whatever you want to call it? And yet, I have sworn to destroy this enemy. Inevitably. Or, inevitability, rather. 
gruesome inevitability is our true enemy. An enemy that cannot be defeated by anyone, anywhere. The only thing you can do is get what's dear to you out of its way. Don't make enemies with inevitability. So we're trying to fight against the inevitable. But what does this inevitable plague need to kill before the unnaturalness has been wiped out? Everybody? So it's pointless to look for the source, isn't it? The source? I'll tell you where to look for the source. So you think you're well aware of what the law is, aren't you? I think I am. Well, I think you aren't. Let me tell you about the law. It's not a state law, but rather a natural one. When mysterious evil emerges from non-existence, it's a clear sign that this law has been violated. Disease is a retribution for trespassers. It is an attempt to restore the balance. What mysterious evil? I don't understand. This town is a minuscule cosmos, and it's the cosmos for its inhabitants. It's too remote, too distant from the rest of the world to serve as an effective part of any other mechanism. So, it's a mechanism in and of itself. A mechanism that's been disrupted. There must have been a flaw, a blemish, a redundant detail, perhaps. I want to find it. It is very isolated, isn't it? The entire town does feel like its own world, and from what she's saying, it sounds like it almost literally is. I see your point. Well, if the line of thinking you've just demonstrated was sincere, I'd be willing to agree with you. Uh... That's it? The dream party has failed its task. So, there's a faulty detail in this mechanism, a mechanism of ours. We only need to find it. Where do we start? What would you suggest? Ooh, I get to choose. Oh, this first one, I like this. I'd start with the wells. Or rather, with a very particular well that's been bothering me for a while now. Yes, Little Vlad's Well of Horrors. Where creepy whispers escape from its red, visceral insides. The abattoir. Hmm. Which one am I more curious about? I'm curious about all of these things. The abattoir? Yes, absolutely. And I do suspect that's where this... I kind of think that's where it all started from. It just feels like it's the center. The starting point. The polyhedron is also very strange. It's the most recent construction project this town has had. And it is probably one of the most unnatural things about this town. But I want to I want to check out that well. I am damn curious about that well. According to your notes, the disease might have sprung from below the ground. Am I correct? Indeed, just like the previous plague epidemic. That epidemiological hazard appeared in the south during coal mining, and the climate was comparable to the local one too, by the way. Have you already checked water? Specifically river water? Hmm. Did we ever actually specifically test the river water? I feel like we did. 
I feel like it was implied that we did, although I never actually did it specifically myself. I've investigated the water hypothesis already, yes. Those frightened Luddites have even destroyed the town water intake, which led to a malfunction of the town water supply system. We found ourselves in a world of trouble because of that. How about we check the hypothesis thoroughly, though? Before we get on with inspecting buildings, we need to make sure the disease was not waterborne. Wells, springs, the river, or maybe a young new stream. Anything. Alright. There is one suspicious well I'd like to check. Yes, I I want to go to that well right freaking now. I cannot wait to see what's in there. I want to know. I really, really, really want to know. Care to tell me more about the suspicious well? Young Vladislav Olgimsky has a rather peculiar hobby. I've been told that he's looking for old cultural layers, the remnants of an ancient culture or something. I've also been told that he's looking for oil. Neither explanation sounds convincing. What kind of person is he? A trustworthy kind, I think. Is this the reason why you two have managed to get on until now, without breaching the subject of the will? Yes. Investigate this further. Ask him. If he refuses to talk, well, there are a number of ways to inspire social interaction. And no, I'm obviously not implying torture. It just may so happen that he suddenly gets in the mood to explain everything to you. He may need a fair hearing to justify his actions. Do you understand? I think? Sounds very much doable. I'll talk to him. I cannot wait to check that well out, but maybe I won't get to. I need to talk with him first. We'll see what happens after that. I get to at least ask him about the well, which is... I haven't slept for three nights in a row. I don't think I'll manage another one. <clears throat> At least being able to ask him directly about the well does satisfy some of my curiosity, but I want to go in there. I want to go into that damn well. Yes. What's your opinion of the canes? The girl, Ava. Did she say anything before she died? Wait, what does this have to do with the canes? Uh, she said she wanted to die for me. Anything else? Yes, she said that her death was inevitable. That's more like it. So what do you think the backstory was? Was there any particularly notable backstory? I'm deadly tired of all these people. They're inhuman. They tell the future, believe in walking zombies, and die in all manners of painfully abnormal ways. Your line of thinking is obviously fallacious, and I was implying something rather mundane. I promise you, no one can really tell the future around here, and neither are deaths inspired by third parties uncommon. Mysterious phenomenons do occur here sometimes, but hardly more often than anywhere else. Okay, would you care to explain the polyhedron? You know, that impossible thing that could not possibly exist? Because structurally it makes no sense? Gravity would bring it down? Why did Ava die, then? I have a distinct suspicion she was made to die. By whom? One of the Canes. I'd even go as far as to claim that they may have performed human sacrifice. Hmm. They did say some strange things about the focus and possibly... bringing Simon back... in another person's body, right? Didn't they? Something like that. I don't believe you. So is that my main quest? Subterranean rot. Yep. Aglaia has briefly studied the evidence and concluded that the bacteria are of mineral origin. Now that I think of it, it does seem plausible. Vlad the Younger has agreed to help us follow up on this hypothesis. It's about time I found out what he's using his will for. I'm so pumped to check out that well. 
However, before going there, I guess I should speak with the canes, just in case they have something for me. I want to go straight to just, just straight to the well. Straight to talk with him about it, but... Gotta make good use of my time. I'm in the area, might as well talk with him. I'm deadly tired. Yep, here we go. They have something for me. I would like to ask for your help, Doctor. One last time. Go ahead. I'm listening. Do you know what crime the Inquisitor is holding our family guilty of committing? She claims that Ava Yon died by your consent, if not by your will. Did she say why we would do such a thing? No. Can it possibly be true? Of course not. I won't have you thinking that our family started killing people in order to resurrect Simon. Why would I ever think that? That surely is not an idea that I was thinking about for a while and just mentioned. No, of course not. Because there's an aspect of truth to it. To be precise, it is true that I intend to bring my brother back to life. We believe that we know how his memory may be transported to focus. A memory? I'm not sure I follow. Dealing with the dead calls for scientific precision, Doctor. In reality, there is neither magic nor necromancy. The dead cannot be raised from their graves. Their souls may not be transfused into inanimate objects. No one truly expects the spirits of their ancestors to reappear in their newborns. What a relief. Would you like to know more about what I mean by dealing with the dead? Of course. There is life after death. That much is certain. A man most certainly has a soul. And that soul certainly belongs to a better world. More so than to the one it leaves behind. Trying to prolong the time the soul has to stay here is not doing it any favors. Yes, undoubtedly. Actually, before I continue, is he talking about the fact that Simon supposedly lived so long? Is he saying that was a bad thing? That that was unnaturally prolonging his life or something, and that it was a bad thing because his soul was stuck here, in this, in this lesser world? Long story short, I'm going to die. But what my death will accomplish is that the memory of my brother will persevere and protect the town forever. I will die so that anyone can come to the Hall of Mirrors and partake of his immortal spirit. Not quite unlike the communion they take when they visit the church. How, how is that even an explanation? How will your death make it so that the memory of your brother will persevere and protect the town? What do you mean? You'll have to make do without my help, I'm afraid. Indeed, Ava died because her soul was parted from her body. Severed from it in the very moment Simon's memory re-emerged in the focus of the crucible. What? That's the way things are. If someone decides to die so that someone else can live, their death will be imminent. There's nothing to be done about it. For such sacrifice has consequences of immense magnitude. This is not a game. And this is exactly how Ava had died. Okay, so he's saying that since Ava decided that she wanted to die, to sacrifice herself for, I guess, Simon, or for me, or for someone, because she decided to do that, it was inevitable that it was going to happen, and that it would happen soon. As if it's like some sort of a binding pact when you come to that decision. I know, she even talked of this before. Oh, pff, that's the end of it. However brilliant an action, it should not be esteemed great unless the result of a great motive. So the Haruspex made his panacea after all. Good for him. I wouldn't be so sure yet. And Gurak has made his final move. He'll probably talk to the foreman about his father. Madman. 
So, wait, he was asking me for help, right? Yeah, he said he wanted help, but he didn't actually give me a quest. What did he want help with? I, I guess he wanted me to stop the Inquisitors from going after the their family? Is that what he wanted? Should I go speak with the Inquisitor then? I don't know. I feel like I would have gotten a quest for it though. The true way to be deceived is to think oneself more knowing than others. Has my brother already spoken to you? Yes. The circumstances are changing. Everything is changing. My brother has decided to end his life. I am powerless to stop him. However, do you know the underlying motives? They have something to do with reincarnation. Since his childhood, my brother Georgie had had rather simplistic views on the connection between the human body and the soul. Disregarding the opinions of theologians and philosophers, and ignoring serious studies on the subject, he worked out a doctrine of his own. Try to imagine our shock when it turned out to be true. What the heck does this mean? I think that's Latin, right? Don't know what it means, though. Tell me about it. We don't understand it ourselves. This necrosophy was probably the only area in which Georgie had surpassed his great brother. No one knows why, but his recipes for communicating with the dead did work. All this terminology, memory, the focus, is of his coinage. Go on. What is he planning now? The focus of the crucible doesn't fit Simon. It's too small. Simon cannot live in there for long. And there is another circumstance. Well, it's no longer important. The focus of the crucible is like a house chapel. While what Simon needs is a cathedral. I don't suppose you're talking about the town's cathedral, or aren't you? Of course not. I'm talking about the polyhedron. Georgie intends to transfer his deceased brother's soul there. He will have to die himself in order to achieve that. Your imagination must already be painting horrific and mesmerizing images of dead Georgie walking towards the polyhedron, hands outstretched, dragging his feet, driven by Simon's spirit. No, certainly not. Perhaps that's what it would look like in the higher spheres. In the world of ideas, if you will. I will, however, disappoint you. It will happen quietly and inconspicuously. No one will see a thing. Georgie will be lying in his room throughout the process. Simon's memory will be transferred to the polyhedron with the power of his mind. Of his imagination, you mean? I meant exactly as I said. I would even risk supposing that Georgie will die from the colossal strain that this work will have put on him. From the concentration of will, intellect, and all his mental powers. So you're saying it's not guaranteed that he would die? Because Georgie made it sound like he has to die for Simon... For Simon's spirit to be reincarnated, or whatever you want to call it. But it sounds like it's not that he has to die, just that he maybe or probably will because of the strain of the whole thing. Hmm. I'm beginning to understand. Oh, <laughs> that's the end of the conversation? Come on, there's gotta be more. Are the troops really led by the famous Alexander Block? This is madness. You're the last friend our family has. I hope our attachment to you doesn't look obtrusive. Or obtrusive, rather. No, not at all. Who is it walking upstairs? Upstairs, what? Does this place actually have two floors? Oh yeah, I guess it does. Although I never... I don't remember seeing any stairs to the upper floor. Weird. Okay, well, I haven't been given a quest of any kind still, but 
I still feel like I should continue talking to these people. Oh god. Oh. I think that knife was about to land in the back of my skull. Oh. There's gotta be a quest here. There's too much here for there not you to be a quest. No death. We only endure it. Nothing new to say to you. I've already exhausted all the stuff with Victor. Um, let's go talk with Maria. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna go over to, sp to speak with the Inquisitor. Because I think that's what Georgie was asking help for originally. That the Inquisitor was suspicious about the Canes, and I think he wanted me to intervene. We weren't given too much time, now were we? Well, guess there's, yeah, nothing there. Alright, in that case, to Maria. And then after that, to Little Vlad's place. I am not ending this episode before examining the well, or, you know, at least talking with Little Vlad about it. I am too damn curious to do that. I have to see it. I have to talk with him about it. I wonder if Maria's gonna hate me. Did you see anything weird on your way here? Oh, <laughs> you know, just the usual. Thieves and plague rats and fire bombers. I can barely hold on to the memory of my mother. Two women are living in me now. I think I'm beginning to understand her. My dear, my beloved mother. I'm starting to sense her thoughts and moods. The feelings that used to drive her. Will you tell me? Didn't you know that the day before yesterday, the sparkling soul of my beloved mother, her memory, has been removed from the focus of the crucible to keep the memory of Simon, murdered by Reuben? Do you realize what that means? I don't. They renounced her. Uncle Georgie and even, I cannot believe this, my dear father. He loved her so much. Eleven years have passed since the day she died, but he still loved her as if she was alive. He talked to her almost daily, listened to her memory, and then they killed her. Okay, so the crucible could only hold one, I guess, small soul at a time. I guess it was a small container, since apparently it can't even contain Simon. At least not for long. And it certainly can't contain two people. So they had to get rid of her mother. I don't understand. They forgot my dear mother. My uncle. What can you expect? He's a ruler and he's a fanatic. His duty is to preserve the memory of the great Simon for the benefit of the town. And he never cared for my mother all that much anyway. But father, how could he betray her like this? Calm down, Maria. But the worst is my spiteful little brother. I want nothing to do with him. Had he not been so stubborn, had he left the polyhedron, no one would have had to expel my mother from focus. Simon would have ascended the throne without further ado, and everyone would have been happy. Wait, you have a little brother? That's... I, I don't even remember his name, but the main guy in the polyhedron, the main boy that I spoke with. And a thousand children would have been thrown out on the street to die. Let a million of them die. If only to save my mom. They're not worth her little finger. Don't say so? I'm not sure how to read that sentence. I think he's trying to say, don't say that. And it's not like Brother is concerned about them. He's only concerned about his game. He's built himself a toy kingdom to reign supreme. He locked himself up there for his own whims, not for the children. Don't cry, Maria. The Inquisitor wants to take away everything we lived for and were proud of. You're so tired, Daniel. You're just not showing it. I see how exhausted you are.
It's you who looks exhausted, Maria. I'm quite all right. No, I'm not. I'm really not all right. I think the other option was more honest. Basically said, I just want to survive for four more days to see the end of this. That's true. It has been forever since I've been inside the polyhedron and I really want to go there, but I don't have time to do that and speak with little Vlad. So you know what? I'm going to little Vlad's place right now. I'm so damn curious about that well. I can't wait. I can't wait. I hope I get to go down there. I'm coming, little Vlad. Can't keep your well a secret anymore. Oh great, a murderer. Uh, is he coming after me or a citizen? Coming after me, great. Can I dodge him? I don't have room to dodge. What? How did they not kill you? I thought it was one shot, one kill. Uh, we still got plenty of ammunition left. 13 shots. What's the condition of it? 86%, plenty fine. Another thief over there, can use my fence trick. Actually, the fence trick isn't going to work, because there's no opening over there, so forget it. Run! <gasps> okay, I dodged the knife he threw, so I'm good. Okay. Little... Little Vlad, you fuck. Nothing suspicious about that, little Vlad. No. The day that I come to examine your well, it's filled up with stones. Hmm. Hmm. You... <sighs> it is easier to govern others than to prevent being governed. So you haven't left. That certainly does you credit. Why did you fill your well up with earth? Can I please just refuse to answer that question? If I'm not mistaken, since yesterday, you're no longer the authorized envoy of the powers that be in the town. Hmm. Which angle do I go with? The angle of, we've been friends for so long, you better talk to me. Go at it as friends, or go at it as Aglaia will get to you if you don't want to talk. Let's try the friend angle first. You can, but that would be the end of our cordial relations. You refusing would suggest a simple conclusion. You dug up some nasty thing that bred bacteria and are now burying the traces of your crime. I value our relations and their cordiality, Dr. Dankowski. You are not as far off the mark as I would have preferred. But I didn't bury anything. I filled up the well because it's no longer required. And that is as much as I'm going to tell you. <laughs> That's not enough. That is not enough. You better tell me more. If you value our relations, tell me what you are looking for underground. Tough luck, Doctor. I don't trust you. My confession wouldn't be of any use to you, but it could raise too much noise. 
you'll draw all the wrong conclusions. The consequences could be tragic, especially if the Inquisitor and the Commander get involved. They will. That much I can guarantee you. Wait, here lives an old enemy of the Olgimskis, since they've decided to stand against me. Perhaps Aspidy can be my ally for the time being. What is she going to do? I never in a million years would have thought of asking her for help with the Olgimskis. Interesting. I thought I was going to have to go back to the Inquisitor. Alright. Changeling knows something. Or she was promised something. It just makes me even more curious. <laughs> you can still hear the whispering. I still hear the voice. <gasps> Total death toll. Almost 3,000 people. It all ends in less than five days. The army arrives tomorrow. Day eight. By the end of which, the bachelor can prove once again that the earth is never up to any good. Sounds like it originates from- oh, whoa. What? Oh my god. Has it happened? This disappears when I zoom all the way out. It's happened, hasn't it? It's happened. Well, well, well. Remember when I said, this map may be more important, more relevant to the game than you think. Well? Look at that. This is a section of the game, a part of the game that I don't think when I played it before I ever got to this part. I don't think I got this far in the game. But I did know about this because I read a series of articles about this game on Rock Paper Shotgun. There's a series of really in-depth articles talking about this game. And I read those, and one of the things they talked about was this map reveal, if you will. I'm not even sure if calling it a reveal is really the right, the right word, because it doesn't really draw attention to it. Just at some point in the game, I guess now, on day 8, your map, at least when zoomed all the way out, changes to this. What does this reveal? Well... I guess it reveals how strangely organic the town is. You can probably see some similarities in how this whole place looks compared to this image. The abattoir looks like this. The polyhedron sort of looks like a horn, I suppose. And what was it that Peter Stamaton was working on, his greatest creation? Building the other one, the other horn, the other polyhedron, the other chalice, whatever he calls it. And... Hmm. Now that I think about it... Now that I think about it... Now that I think about it, look at these three organs. I suppose this is the brain, this is the heart, and this is the stomach, perhaps? I'm not entirely sure what that is, to be honest. That is the abattoir, it is something, it is the source of something. But now that I think about it, there's three main organs. And guess what's in the town? Three main ruling families. Off to the left would be the Canes. The Brain. I guess they're the... The smart ones. The scholarly ones. The mystical ones. 
I could see how that could be associated with a brain. This looks like the heart. That would be... Perhaps I'm being too poetic here. Searching for things that maybe don't exist, but this does seem to fit. The heart would be the thing that, well, pumps blood. It's the thing that does work and keeps you going. And this would match the Ogimskis in the center of town. Right? The lifeblood of the town. They are... The Ogimskis are commerce. And I suppose this is the stomach, probably? Which is the Sabrovs? Because the stomach is what provides the body with power, and the Sabrovs are the, the powerful people. They're the ones with military rule. Or, or just rule in general. They're the enforcers of law. This? I don't even know what this is. And the three families are supposed to be all kind of different heads of the same beast. This whole town is its own microcosm. It is... a creature. <laughs> what does it mean? Bulls are taken into the abattoir and sacrificed. But the entire town is itself inside of a... a bull? Creatures inside of creatures? A microcosm inside of a creature? Are we the... <laughs> are we the bacteria inside of the body of an animal? Everything appears big to us because we're small? I love this game. I love this game so much. <laughs> Alright, well, I think that's a pretty good place to end this episode. And by the way, if you're thinking that because I read those articles and I knew this whole map reveal, if you're thinking that I happen to know, like, the end of the game, or the true meaning behind all of this, I don't. It's been a long time since I've read those articles, and honestly, the only thing I remember from them is the map reveal thing that I just saw. That's it. I don't know. I actually do not know. Well, I think this episode will give you a lot to think about. It's going to give me a lot to think about. I hope you've enjoyed so far. And when I return, I'm going to see if I can use Aspidy to help me against Little Vlad.